We want to say shout out to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, Webmerized, Red Hill Brewing, Crave Bath and Body, and the Milwaukee Bucks. Without you, this episode would not be possible. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy. While you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and set a spell. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to our starting lineup, running on the field, tying up their laces, number 22 in the program, number one in your hearts. Let's give it up for Magic Man. Hey, everybody. And then at the control deck, the only one that has power on this show, it is our producer, Brian. Hey, hey, hey. And of course, I be your illustrious host, Biggin. I love you. Probably more than I should. Uh, we wanted to say, uh, uh, I don't even know what we're going to say. Uh, R.I.P. Bismarcky is what I'm going to say today. Too soon. That's, I mean, it is too soon. I love Bismarcky. Right. Uh, he wasn't that we'll much older than us either. <laughs> Rut row raggy. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we'll talk a little bit more about biz. But before we begin, let uh, producer Brian tell our folks where they can find us on these socials. Yep, we're on all the socials. Just, you know, Google. We'll be there. Yep. Facebook.com slash Southern Fried Philosophy, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch at SFP Radio. You can always email the show, SFP Radio at gmail.com if you would like to support the show financially. Um, I can give you my mailing address later, or uh, you can go to patreon.com slash SFP radio. And we're streaming on all the places, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon prime. Yep. Um, just search Southern fried philosophy. Yep. Uh, also iHeartRadio, radio, Spotify and the tune in app. Make sure you like comment, subscribe wherever you did find the show. Even if it's a nasty comment, we'll take it. <laughs> we, I especially like the nasty comments. Those make me, uh, make me happy. Right. Uh, speaking of uh, all the places you can find things, um, I don't know. Uh, do you remember we had a guest on the show, Jay Turner? He was the director mm. of um, a movie called Broken Armor. And um, he sent me a text message this week. Evidently, it got picked up and now it's at Walmart for evidently nine ninety eight. So if oh. you would like to look at that movie, it's in Walmart. I think that's huge. Right. There you it's go. Stream yeah. Or is that? Like a disc? Uh, it's a DVD. Um, okay. I, I think it's also on Amazon, I believe. Um, so you could check it out there as well. But nine ninety eight. That's a, definitely a Walmart price. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's always the ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> falling prices. <laughs> Every day, falling prices. Uh, Producer Brian mentioned uh, the Patreon thing. Hmm. Uh, listen, if you are in the Concord area and you are a Patreon subscriber, we are going to have a Red Hill Celebration Day where all of those folks and us will be at Red Hill Brewery. We'll be releasing one of our, or maybe both of our mm. Southern Fried Philosophy bourbon barrel ales there. And we're just going to have a good time, celebrate, have a, a charcuterie plate, maybe some food, oh. what have you. And then uh, we're just going to be able to hang out. If you are a Patreon subscriber, though, even for a dollar, you're invited and you're allowed to come up. So we would appreciate that. We would... Uh, love to have you. It'd be a great time. Uh, also, we would ask if you could please be a YouTube subscriber. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Just click on the button, smash it, pound it, like it, lick it, whatever you want to do. We would really appreciate that. Um, turn off your notifications and that will be it. You don't have to do anything else. Just those things. If you are staying at home and you want to do your own podcast, uh, fans only account, anything else like that, contact producer Brian at headlines at SFP radio. If you would like to be a show sponsor. Email me at Biggin or email Biggin at SFP radio at gmail.com. We would appreciate that. Want to say shout out to our listener from Oregon. Congratulations. <laughs> Hope things are nice and dry. Are, are they fanning nice? the smoke and is cooler? That, oh, yeah. Because <clears throat> the haze that we're getting here is yeah. apparently from the Oregon fire. Oh, yeah. really? Like, I was wondering. Yeah. How does that? I mean, I, I mean, I thought I knew how science worked, but. 
it it goes up. Here's what happens. It goes up so high. I saw it on the Today Show thing. The, the smoke goes up so high in the atmosphere that it could travel, and then it gets to a certain point where, like, the, the jet stream pulls it Sounds back like down, huh. and it kind of gives you that haze. Is that why we have humidity? Is our humidity, like, from the Pacific Ocean? Is that probably. where it comes from? Okay, that's probably that makes a lot of sense. It. Actually, it would make more sense from the Atlantic Ocean because we're right there. Both. We're getting both. That's the we're, problem. That's what actually, we're nailed by. It. Yeah, both the currents. <laughs> it's actually the Atlantic and the Gulf. <laughs> well, thanks, Mr. Oh, Science. Wow. Mr. 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 Wizard. Wizard. Jinx joke. Uh, they don't call uh, me listen. Magic Man for nothing. <laughs> um, hey, li- Oregon listener, I, listeners, I need you to do me a favor. Just your, your homework this week is to tell one person about the show. Just have them mm-hmm. go in. Like the show, like subscribe to it, download the entire 180 some odd episodes. Uh, That is your homework. You have one job this week. If I don't see more numbers out of Oregon, I know Mm. you failed. We don't want to give you credit if you drive to Alaska and get someone to subscribe there. That's right. 100 percent. Yeah, we still got to do that. We will do that. We just got to figure out who we're going to call because there's really not a whole lot of people in Alaska. Come on. Um, Alaska's not that far of a drive. (laughs) <laughs> road <kidding>. trip <laughs> road trip <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna ask you like i ever ask you every week i'd be darn y'all i'm tired oh <sighs> this something has been, other than the weather i know this has been i a, like it a hectic week um, so what's going for, on this week just work i mean what's mm-hmm. new right but i don't know just this yeah. something like I told y'all, I, I basically slept all afternoon, evening on Sunday, and all night Sunday night into Monday morning, and got up for work. Mm. And um, wow, yeah, I've just been I've been tired. The I don't know, so I'm looking forward to the weekend. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some uh, sleeping in on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, Pretty <surprised>. yeah, <laughs> sleeping uh, in. What is that? So, have you guys have heard of Christmas in July? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm yeah. celebrating New Year's in July. Really? <laughs> yeah. How does that uh, work? Well, I tried to put on a oh, pair like, of pants the other day, oh. and it was difficult. It was uh, unexpected oh. results. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm hopping on a diet in the middle of the year. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I did? I just went out and bought a bigger pair of pants. That's much yeah, easier. Well, the same thing. I really <laughs> like those pants. Uh, Comfortable. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I was doing well, and then. Someone had this dumb idea to eat like forty six chicken sandwiches mm-hmm. in the course yep. of two months. Yep. Um mm-hmm. and that kind of derailed yep. Blame some it on things. Me. Um so But you enjoy those chicken sandwiches though. Yeah, I'd eat one right now if you put one in front of me. <laughs> mm. I yeah, had so. uh the chicken this week. Oh wait, chicken? The the Burger King Chicken oh, sandwich. The so new sorry. and improved Burger King chicken sandwich. So does it have actual chicken in it? Uh, it neither had Burger King or chicken in it. Because mm. mm. they had their cla- their classic chicken sandwiches, that big <laughs> oval looking thing, mm-hmm. which I've eaten plenty of. But the chicken right. in that's more like canned fish and chicken. <laughs> like if you, even it's not even like it's like the cheap canned chicken, maybe. Right. Like they just make a patty out of it and a deep bunch fry of it. red meat. And onion ring oil. Mm. Mm, I hate that. Slap some onion, some American cheese on there. Uh huh. Yeah. <sighs> no, this was a hand breaded, supposedly, uh, mm. chicken fillet. Fill it. Good. It was dried out. Yeah, yeah. It was a fillet. I actually mm. read an article uh, yesterday, yesterday or day before yesterday, saying that Burger King. Oh. Huh, thank you, uh, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King uh, has has fallen out of the number two spot of. Uh, popularity for fast food restaurants uh used to be number two for a long time and and unfortunately their quality is has gone down and, and people have noticed it so um yeah they're not doing as good as they used to and i, I can, I can kind of tell when i've done burger king every now and then it's it's not the same it's not good Bur- it's burger not king the same. is now number two not number two <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i think they had their numbers because they'd put stores in places that didn't have any other fast food mm. so they put like oh well, there's nothing there's no mcdonald's here let's drop a let's put a burger king next to the subway and, right uh, it's not a burger king, man subway has <laughs> gone ballistic they've oh, yeah. they're just everywhere so what is number two now wendy's hey mm. 
acceptable. Okay. And they've got a good burger, so those, I used as well. Those I, square I, patties I, are good. I'll still I'll still fight you on their breakfast. Still think the breakfast is good. Breakfast is fine. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't think fight. I think it's as good as Chick fil A's breakfast, so <sighs> Yeah, it is. I'll, the <laughs> argument here is that if you compare if you compare chicken to chicken, Chick fil A oh, is better. Sure. So the biscuit at Chick fil A is horrible. Nobody likes same. that biscuit. They're the so, same. They're, they're not the same. same. They are not the same. same. I, I, Nobody's I, perfect. Mm, Jesus was, but I can't eat them now, but I challenge you to get both of them next to each other to see the biscuit. Oh, absolutely. They're completely different. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll fight on that. <laughs> uh, so last week I had, uh, my un- aunt and uncle, uh, and her, my cousin and her two kids came in on Thursday night and then immediately following, uh, a sketch from Texas, one of my best friends, uh, he flew and his wife and kid, uh, up here to visit. So they spent Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then left uh, on Wednesday, <clears throat> so they had a we had a good good visit. But man, it was it, I, I got I told him I got a new grill, and so he was all excited about hey, let's you know throw something on it. But mm. you know, as on a smoker, you don't just throw stuff on it. So there was a large prep time <laughs> for me, <laughs> and then I well, realized. Go ahead. But well, you can also, that's a grill also, right? It's a grill, yeah. But I think he wanted smoked. So oh. he wanted some some smoked. Mm, so yeah. I was or you like, have to well, smoke him a brisket Yeah, two hours, right? Let me show you a 12-hour brisket. I was like, <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. But last time I made a pork butt, I used almost an entire bag of charcoal for one five-pound pork butt. Like, well, I'm not going to do that again. So I was like, I'm going to put more on the grill. So this time I did two pork butts. Um, I did uh, two slabs of ribs and smoked cream cheese. Have you guys heard of smoked cream cheese? I think I I have. This week I've seen it from like three different people. Yeah. Wow. So you just throw some uh, cream cheese. uh, You cover it with, uh, I used the same rub that I put on the ribs, but other people put cinnamon toast crunch dust you know cinnamon sugar on it other people and jessica said she she would have preferred the everything but the bagel seasoning which Mm. makes sense right sure um and you just cover it on all all the sides and then smoke it and it turned out very well i i over i burnt it on the bottom but you could still get the top of it and dip it with a cracker and enjoy it was quite lovely nice so the, is it the Memphis Dust Rub? Is that what you're mm-hmm. using? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And when you use crackers? Yeah. Just get some crackers. Okay. It has a, a and here, here's the problem, though. I got it done way before they came home, so it kind of cooled off a little bit. But originally it had this, like, marshmallowy texture where if you ran the cracker through it, it had, like, you know, like a roasted marshmallow consistency. Yeah. I bet so, you could do like a, a, a s'mores play with that. Did the cream cheese and put like a little bit something sweet. I like might get it sweet and put a little white sugar and maybe mix with it. Mm. Like maybe maybe whip it and then put it in some kind of container. Oh, whip it good. Put like some chocolate chips or something in there uh-huh. and like smoke that all together and eat it the graham crackers. That probably be good. okay. I got you. Oh, graham crackers. Just a guess. I don't know. Maybe it might be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I'm up to my armpits in pulled pork so producer brian uh magic man if you want to stop by the house come over we've done that but i did i did and this is not on the on our thing but i did one where i just used the memphis dust the other time where i I used an injection and i think i like the injection better Mm. i'm just gonna say so it was pretty good uh did you inject with it uh i just got some uh it was like gold uh barbecue sauce and then just injected salt, pepper, garlic powder on the top, and then mm-hmm. injected it with the barbecue sauce, and then let it rip. Interesting. That's good. That sounds good. Mm. Uh, all right. So here's our southern phrase of the week. Speaking of food, uh, <laughs> I am so full, I'm about to pop. After a big old southern meal, complete with collard greens, cornbread, and mm. pecan pie, <sighs> it's probably pretty accurate to say you feel like you're about to pop. A friend of mine used the term 
fuller than a tick on a three day suck. Mm. So that's either, one of the phrase, yeah. Yeah, either <laughs> you can either use either one of those to say that you are very very full. All right. Um, so, gentlemen, I want to bring up. Speaking of the the, the cooking and the and the smoking, I got mm. here. I don't know if you can see this or not. This is the Liberty Spice. They came in the mail. Liberty Spice. This is Shorty's finishing dust. Oh, Shorty's. So you'll remember Lee Short. He was on yeah. the on the show. Mm-hmm. Does the competition barbecue? Well, he he teamed up with Liberty Spices, uh, LibertySpices dot net, uh, and they created created this Shorty's finishing dust. And evidently, this is the secret stuff that after you've got your pulled pork and you've pulled it. It's nice steaming hot. You just get this shorty's dust, sprinkle it on top, mix it in with it, and it is supposed to be fantastic. Mm. So Man, you're making me hungry. Right? I'm telling you. I'm I'm excited mm. to try it. I I got their pork rub as well, so we'll see how that goes. All um right. so and I've got you, producer Brian, since you smoke, I got you one as well. So All right. There you go. I'll That's let you have you, some, uh, Ryan, smoke. if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to go. <laughs> he, wants, go. <laughs> he wants some finishing dust, too. Uh, if you would like some, Ryan, I will, I'll be glad to get you some. Thank you, Did you ever uh, <laughs> unearth your grill from the... I'm sorry? Magic Man, did you ever unearth your grill from the... <laughs> no. Or whatever? That is oh. another Southern term for you. No. 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 We got to get back there. <laughs> my fear is any snakes hiding in there in, in, in yeah, any but just you know just hit it throw a couple rocks at it you know it'll scare them out <laughs> how, how would I they need to, get in there how would uh, i have a cover i have a cover over it so it get oh. like on the bottom it's just a snake i mean come on all right I mean, so, we got so what i'm what i'm hearing is after church when come over and we're gonna just get the get the top off of it and then Make sure there's no snakes. And maybe, maybe someone's standing by with the, like a, a weed burner, like a flamethrower or something, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, and if it's not too bad, maybe we can go ahead and fire it up and make something. Oh, no. No, 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 no. There's no we're way. Gonna, we're going to wait till you're clean and that thing is clean and you get new, new, uh, great new grace. grace. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a hot minute before we come over for that. <clears throat> yeah, I'll have to, uh, it, whenever that happens, as far as, uh, uncovering it and checking everything out i'll have to do a video maybe we can put it on the website or something oh there here's, you go here's, here's to you 2025 yeah um <laughs> <laughs> speaking of also ways of cooking um i celebrated mm. at work the uh my 15 year anniversary i was i've been in the same company for 15 wow. years have i done that yet congratulations that one time. thank you thank you, you. that one time yeah and, uh, That's and so I didn't realize, but I got a free gift. I was like, okay, well, nice. let me see. Let me see what kind of gift we are. I'm thinking like vacation, a cruise, mm. you know, something, thousand dollars, something, yeah. something really snazzy. So they sent me to a link where it's like, Hey, pick out your gift. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I go there and there was like sunglasses, a cutlery set, <laughs> you know, I felt like, like credit card points, go get rewards, like <laughs> right? that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I felt like I was the kid at the arcade. that only has like 10, 10 token, uh, 10 card get things. The finger, the finger bracelet <laughs> thing, like the finger yeah. handcuffs. I get yes. a finger bracelet, a finger uh, <laughs> ring and like a, a Tootsie roll, you know? So I was like, Oh man, I really want the other thing, but I can't. So I ended up getting a sous vide. Because, hey. Producer Brian, you've talked about a sous vide before. Yeah, man. Um, but I don't know what to do. with. I know I could do <laughs> eggs. I know I could yeah. do, I uh, do a steak. A steak is yes. evidently really good with it. But I don't know what else I'm going to do with it. Uh, so I like to do uh, pork tenderloin in mine. Okay. Because you can get it. It won't dry out. So you will get the you can get the perfect temperature. Hit it with whatever kind of rub you want. Throw in there. Set it at, you know, pick whatever temperature you want to cook to. Depends on your doneness level. But right, one fifty probably on the pork tenderloin, but uh, yeah, just it, it it just it's the most it's the most juicy thing. Like one of my pet peeves is putting a pork tenderloin in a crock pot. Okay, it just turns into like dry nothing, right? Okay, but imagine 
the same kind of process, but it's just cooking its own juices. It gets okay. so good. I love doing that. Uh, steaks, you know, bigger pieces of meat. Anything big, larger pieces of meat, you have to cook for a really long time. Right. Like days. Ooh, good um, gravy. I've made mashed potatoes in there, which is uh-huh. kind of a mess. Really? I use, steak's my go-to, though. Huh. But yeah, yeah, you do a steak in there, and then you fire up your old grill to about 700 degrees on that griddle. Yeah, buddy. Sear them off for about a minute and a half each side. Call it a day. Second best steak you'll ever eat. But what's the first one? The reverse sear. Oh, got gotcha. you. And yeah. explain, so the idea is that you put this like little thing in water, yeah. and it gets the water temperature up to whatever it is. Whatever number, yep. But if it's at 150 degrees, how is the water not boiling out? Because the boiling temperature of water is 212, yep. I believe. 212. I thought it was 100. No. Celsius. 100 Celsius, yeah. 212 Fahrenheit. Oh. So you're, you're in Fahrenheit. All right. Uh, on, unless you set that. it to Celsius, yeah. then you're cooking probably around 80 or something. Okay. But, um, All right. That's, the, yeah. <laughs> so Metric evidently, system. I've got to take a civics class and just a physical science class. Got it. Yep. I've go. got to go back to third grade. Freshman. Freshman year. Freshman year. <laughs> that explains so much why <laughs> I didn't understand anything. <laughs> And so you stick it in there. You you can leave it in there for as long as you want. Evidently, perfect eggs are like forty five minutes at one hundred and twenty nine degrees. Depends on, how it depends on your taste on that too. Yeah, like I've had a lot of luck with like poached egg. I love poached eggs. Yeah, but I, I haven't love- had a lot of luck with those in the sous vide. You can do it, mm. but you still need to finish them because the whites are still kind of runny. Yeah, a bit. Kind of. I haven't had a lot of success with that. Gotcha. People do it. This hasn't been for me. Yeah. Um, you can overcook those so fast, but I've I've done a like a Boston butt in there, like a like a carnitas style, like Mexican style. Okay, and made like pulled pork that way for tacos and stuff. Okay, it just disintegrates. It's awesome. Hmm. I'm gonna need some recipes. So if any of our listeners have any sous vide recipes, I'd appreciate it. Uh, there's a whole YouTube channel oh. that will inspire you. It's called Sous Vide Everything. Okay, it's a guy named Guga. He's from Brazil originally. Uh, when I first got my circulator, I started watching him. And it, it starts off being very informative, and then it turns into, uh, here's a $300 steak I did sous vide. Like, Ooh. here's some experiment I did sous vide. And he has two channels. They're really, I mean, the food he makes mm. is amazing. Okay. Uh, but that's a great, like, they do the experiments. Like, they do the egg experiment. Here's nine temperatures, and this one came out raw. Mm. This one came out hard-boiled. Like, gotcha. the whole gamut. Oh, yeah. that's perfect. So, and the idea is start. that we could throw, you know, three chicken breasts in, and there, you know, it'll be two hours later, but it'll come out perfect. Yeah, it's it's good for like you guys entertain more than I do. Also, mm. like if you have people over, you can set like like the chicken, or, for example, in there or right. a vegetable, and just when it's ready, it's ready, and it stays fine for a little while. You don't want to leave it in there forever, right? Because it'll eventually like pickle in its own, <laughs> but. <laughs> Not as good. It gets, the chicken gets over. It gets overdone in the wrong, in a weird way. The texture okay. just changes at some point. Hmm. So you don't have forever, but you have a long time to let it sit. Gotcha. Well, we'll see how things roll with it. So I'm, I'm excited to try it. <clears throat> I also yeah. got a vacuum sealer. I mean, yep. we're rolling over here. So yeah, man. Jessica says, "Stop getting little appliances. I don't like it. <laughs> we have very limited counter space anymore." Well, for the sous vide, you need like a giant tub to put your stuff in too. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like you buy one thing, and then you got to buy fifteen other different things. All the accessories, sure. Yeah, I mean, I got to buy the plastic containers. The big Welcome to plastic. capitalism. That's how they get you. That's how they yep. get you. Um, so this is the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, and I thought I was flipping through the old guide the other day on the telly, and they had um, Southern. They had the Dukes of Hazard on there. I was like, oh, I haven't watched the Dukes of Hazard for a while, and then. Realized, I mean, these folks are country. And I thought, I started thinking, like, what are some other shows that are based geographically in the South? And so I kind of want to get your thoughts. Mm. I have a few few of them. And so just let me see if you have any others to add. Uh, I got, uh, obviously, Dukes of Hazard, mm. uh, Andy Griffith. Set in North Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, the and and to follow that. I'm also going to say Matlock because that was filmed yeah. in, in Atlanta. 
It right. takes place in the South, yeah. Uh, Mama's Family. Mm-hmm. Do you remember Mama's Family? I think oh, yeah. I do remember that. Vicky Lawrence, Lawrence was yeah. great, yes. Uh, yeah, that was long. She was the grandma. She was like the original Tyler Perry. I forgot you know, all about Big Mama. that. <laughs> yeah, she's hilarious. That was a great show. Yeah, um, and Golden Girls. Mm. Yep. Although some people would say Miami's not the South, but right. Well, that's that. That's we'll give your, it to them because yeah. we like the show. Is is Florida <laughs> the South, or does it stop in? It depends well, on. Georgia. <clears throat> People say it depends on what part. <laughs> okay, south of Jacksonville, is it the south? <laughs> Jacksonville the is the very top of the state, so anything lower than that is not, you don't got a lot going or, on yeah, there. South of the Everglades, I guess. That's the, yeah. I <laughs> think you've got to give the south at least Orlando, at least. Mm. Uh, and then uh, Green Acres. Oh, goodness. Green Acres. Yeah, it wasn't that. Wow. I, I mean, was it? I, th- I, th- I think it was. Do, 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 do. Uh, the songs do, do, immediately do, do, do. comes to your head, right? Yep. <clears throat> We're all looking it up right now. Yep. <laughs> um, see, the plot New York lawyer longs for a simple life. Yeah, I mean, I, had, I think that took place. At least it depicted some Southern stuff because mm-hmm. the the cast were definitely had some twang in there, right? Oh, uh, Hee Haw. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, literally a perfect, sitcom. Yeah. A show. I mean, it was a, yeah. you know, oh, a skit how could comedy, I but Hee Haw. Right, I just, that just came to me. I was thinking about That's the accents. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Hee Haw. Watched a lot of that. Does, um, does Dallas walk? Okay, so that was going to be a question. Does Dallas count? In Texas, in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, that's the, uh, yeah. Well, we'll, ex- we'll claim Texas, I suppose. Then I then you would have to automatically include Walker, Texas Ranger. Yep. Mm, yeah, I think yep. anything with like a cowboy kind of kind of takes on some of the southern hmm. things, right? You couldn't put Bo- Bonanza in. That's not a southern. No, not. It's more of a western. You Dallas be felt. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the line? I guess. <laughs> It's called the Mason Dixon. Yeah. Uh, it, what about the other one I thought of was in the heat of the night. Oh, that took place in Louisiana. Hey, if we're counting Miami, Miami Vice works. Yeah. Okay. All oh, right. That's more of a citified. I wouldn't call that. But those weren't Southern gentlemen. No. <laughs> no. No. This is more of a citified urban. Yeah. Is there anybody in the chat? Do, do they have anything that they want to add? Uh, it's and, but those, tonight. Are, those are like older shows. The only thing I could think of uh, recently is Duck Dynasty, but that's just a reality show. Uh, yeah. And then there was okay. a show called Justified, and that mm-hmm. was based out of Kentucky. But I can't so, think of anything. When you mentioned this originally, I did what anyone does when they haven't studied for a test. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I Googled it. Okay. Designing so. women. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good one. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, man. Dude. I did that without Googling it, too. Delta Burke for me at some point, and I was like, she's kind of cute. Mm. Mm, nope. So here's a, a, a <laughs> uh, ranker.com. Okay, ranker. List. Some of these I don't agree with. Um, okay. So these are ranked, of course. These what does it say number one hundred? Okay, uh, Andy Griffith Show, of course. Yep, Heart of Dixie, which I've never seen. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that with my wife. Dukes of Hazard, mm. Golden Girls, uh, Friday Night Lights, which I've never seen. Okay, either, but I think that's that's a good one. Dallas is on this list. Justified, Matlock, True Blood. Oh HBO. yeah, that's down in like New Orleans, I yeah. think, or Mississippi or something. Bonton, Louisiana. Yep. Uh, there's an Outer Bank series that's on Netflix. Yeah, that's like last year. I've yep. seen that. Probably should watch this. I was just there. Um, in the heat of the night, One Tree Hill. Hmm. I don't know anything about Miami Vice, Dallas. Didn't I already say Dallas? Yep. This is like a reboot, maybe. Oh, this is Dallas too. The 2012. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. there was a Dallas too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Evening Shade. Mm-mm. I remember. Don't remember that. CSI I don't remember watching Miami. Notice. Yeah. Uh, Ameri- one of the American Horror Stories. Burn Notice took place in Florida. Oh, that's right. It's a fun show if you haven't seen that. That is. I like that show. Uh, the Walking Dead. Oh, my gosh. Why didn't I think right. of that one? Yeah, uh, I haven't seen any of those. Uh, TJ Hooker. Where was that based at? Hmm, that's interesting. The LA. Does that count? <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> With the shack. Big Easy. Never seen the Big Easy either. A Different World. Which was, I thought that was college there? was like around DC. Maybe it's Atlanta. Huh. huh. Okay. It was DC. So, uh, I'm just, again, this is Ranker. Right. This is us. Yeah. Uh, Big Filthy Rich, the Royal Family from huh. 91 had Red Fox in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's another one based in the South. Here comes Honey Boo Boo. Uh, I'm going to skip through some of these. <laughs> By the way, heard Ryan, of them. you're really hot. Like, is he hot to you? Am I hot? Not, I mean, he's not really my type. But, I mean, uh, all right, I'll turn him down in my ears. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, Malcolm and Eddie, remember that show? Mm-mm. Had uh, uh, Theo Huxtable in it. Uh, Walking see. Dead. See that? Nice one nice. thinking there, but that was perfect. Yep. Yeah, that. I mean, there's it says fifty, but there's only thirty nine on this list. So. <laughs> Move to the next one. Oh, it doesn't say fifty. It just says greatest shows. So, gotcha. But I'm not sure that's uh, true. And there were there were some good shows. There's some I miss like the old show was like obviously Andy Griffith, but I miss Mama's Family and Hee Haw. I miss those mm. ones. That, that one's coming back to me the more we the more you say that out loud. Mama's Family. <laughs> she had this. Uh, her son was Vince. like this real. He he wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, you know, and he was always messing stuff up, and Mama would always have to fix it. Uh, okay. And she had, and he had that that uh, wife that was, was I mean, Naomi, oh, Naomi, the yes, big old blonde hair, always chewing on okay. gum. Feel like she should be on Alice. Yeah, that show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so there's that. Uh, go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm just looking through. Still looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a '80s TV show. Oh. Tom Loop right now, dude. I love like eighty shows. I still, I still watch Matlock. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move on. So, you guys know, you guys work well. Magic Man, you work for a company. <laughs> I work for a company. I'm not quite sure what Brian does. I know about companies. <laughs> you know about companies. <laughs> um, did you know that CEOs? They make a lot of money, but they made 299 times more than their average workers last year. Um, the difference between CEO and meeting employee grew, uh, pay grew in 2020 despite the COVID pandemic and ongoing relief efforts. The average S&P 500 company CEO made 299 times the average worker salary, according to... AFL CIO's annual executive pay watch report. Executives received 15.5 million in the past decade. At the same time, the average production and non supervisory worker in 2020 earned 43,512, only up $957 a year over the past decade. The past decade. Uh, both average compensation and pay ratios grew in 2020 during the pandemic. Executives uh, average total compensation increased more than $700 mil- or thousand dollars last year, while CEO to worker ratio is 264 to one in 2019. Um, guys, they make a ton of money, a ton of money. But did you guys realize it was 299 times more? Than the average worker, I knew it was a ridiculous amount, but not that much. What? Seems That's like a lot of money. Seems like all the money goes to executives and investors. So two hundred, see two hundred ninety nine to one. And what was the average take home? Did they say that it, the average was forty three thousand? Oh, that's what the average worker makes, right? Yeah, 
Oh, okay. I was going to do the math. To, yeah. so the, the math was done for me. The average was 15.5 for a CEO and 43,000 for a regular worker. It's only uh, 12 million. I mean, that's not that big a deal, right? <laughs> the highest compensate, compensated CEO in 2020 was Chad Richardson of Paycom, who received more than $200 million in salary and stock awards that vested over time. Mm. Other companies, re, um, executives topping the list was GE, Regeneron for Pharmaceuticals, Hilton, T-Mobile, Nike, Microsoft, and Netflix. The most skewed <laughs> belonged to Aptivo, uh, which had a 5,000 Two hundred and ninety-four to one CEO to worker pay ratio. The company CEO was compensated more than thirty-one million, and the average employee was five thousand nine hundred and six dollars. <laughs> he made thirty-one million, and they made uh, almost six thousand dollars. Uh you talk about working for the man. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. And these are massive companies. Massive, yep. Massive. So, I don't know. I, is it, I get is, the the numbers and how it looks like a lot, but think about how many people, like, you have to have levels, right? It's not like uh, one guy with 20,000 employees, right? There's, like, there's tiers. There's a manager, and the manager has a manager, and the manager has a manager, and the manager has a board director, like... And right. Everyone can't make the same amount of money, right? Sure. No. Can and that's they? yeah, that's that's not the deal, but they just make so much. Is it worth are they worth that much money? Did they earn it, I guess, right? That's the question. Yeah. yeah. What happens is companies will put a figure like that out there to attract talent. So they'll be competitive and mm-hmm. tr- attracting that high level of talent for their C level suite. And of course, you know, if you're offered that much money, are you gonna say no? No, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, if, so. if any one of us had the option to be a CEO tomorrow, making that much money, we would do it in a heartbeat, right? I don't know if that I want that kind money. of pressure. But what <laughs> pressure is there? Like, that's the thing is like, yeah. you take your 15.5 million, well, uh, even if you screw up, I mean, you have you your take golden parachute. Money and yeah. You just think leave. about some of these guys. Yeah. If they say something stupid, stocks tank, right? Yeah. And right. suddenly they're. Being held responsible for that, and sure. then they're out of a job. Then they can find another job for two hundred million dollars. But <laughs> that can't be easy. Well, what's the talent pool? What's the level of people with that skill set? Yeah, air quotes. Yeah. Uh, but isn't the idea almost the same as the president? Like you may not be the smartest guy in the in the room, but you surround yourself with others that are the smartest in the room. Yeah. But leadership. And then you're like, oh, nah, that sounds like a good idea. So we'll go that route. So yeah. uh, just don't say anything stupid on Twitter and you can be a CEO. <laughs> yeah. And these guys didn't make this kind of money, the economic impact. I mean, think if we would have all these private planes not being flown around and these yachts and stuff, not be, you know, there's so much that gets, they spend their money, right? Yeah. I would say don't do anything on stupid on Twitter, but then we have a, a former president that that's all he did. So there's that. <laughs> um, speaking of making a boatload of money, uh, did you see uh, with the NIL, the name image likeness from the NCAA, uh, Bryce Young, the quarterback of Alabama, uh, got a deal that was $1 million. For his likeness. For his likeness, image, uh, or name. So he can do, uh, I think he's making commercials or something like that. Made one mil- signed a one million dollar deal. Uh, keep in mind, the is, boy hasn't thrown a ball in Al- at Alabama. Has he put a uniform on yet? I mean, no, what? no, he hasn't. He's practicing now and has made a million dollars. So <sighs> Lane Kiffin was asked about it, and he was just speechless at SEC media days. And uh, so he was like, "Wait, he made a million? And then you could just see the look on his face. It was just. Like, wait, what? And and so he asked a few more questions. Was asked a few more questions. He answered them, and then he goes, "Really, a million dollars?" And then he kept bringing <laughs> it up. So he's already like, ah. Um. So I think, I mean, 
the NCAA college athletics is completely changed. I mean, kids are making already a million bucks, and the kid hasn't even thrown a football yet. Yeah, what's this going to do, like, for their drive, right? Like, think about a lot of these, like, the athletes that end up going to the NFL mm-hmm. got nothing before they went to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Would they? Are they still going to play as hard? Are they still going to, like... Because if you pull that million dollars, you play it right, you're set, right? You can yeah. don't really have to. I mean, you could live on that probably depending on what situation is. Yeah. But is that, are they going to keep like, going for it and have those next level ambitions? Yeah, I would think so. Now I, now, I think what's going to be interesting is, especially in basketball where kids can be one and done and leave, they can make more money at the school than go into the NBA, potentially. Sure. Yeah, um, if they're not uh, a, like, a list. Like a, a lottery pick in, that, pick in the first, yeah, in the first round, first 10. So and th- they'll probably stick around a little bit longer, so that might be better for the game in general. Yeah. But, I mean, kids are going to get paid, and, and I think that they should. One, this isn't coming from the colleges, right? These are, you know, private companies, organizations that want – to advertise and, and that kind of stuff. And they're just using these kids to, to do that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Lane was not uh, super happy about it. He said, you know, that's great for the kid. But now he's like, oh, no. It's like it's going to, I think it re- he realized how much of an impact that's going to be going forward for the kids. Because now they've got to do, you know, go to practice, now do cameos and go do advertisings and go do commercials and go yeah, do this and, and that. The one player who's like, got a ton of money and then like you got your backup offensive tackle right who's you know he's eating beanie weenies out of a can right <laughs> what's well, the I relationship who, who it was that told me but one of the quarterbacks did a deal with a buffet and the the deal was like you know golden corral or something like that and the deal was like all my linemen eat free and he'll do the commercials as long as his linemen eat free Oh, okay. You know, so you could pass the wealth around, there you, go. Yeah. you know, and do things like that. So hmm. it's just really interesting. A million dollars and kid hasn't even thrown thrown a ball yet. So that's crazy. Uh, all right. So uh, I have some wacky news, if that's okay to that's to bring. Uh, and this one is labeled "Jesus Take the Wheel." Uh, a woman let God take the wheel as a test of faith in a high speed Ohio crash. And in shocking news, this was not in Florida, uh, Beachwood, Ohio, a driver involved a high speed collision after she literally tried to, quote, let God take the wheel last month while uh, last month now faces multiple charges. Uh, Ohio police say on June 15th, officers responded to an intersection in the city of Beachwood where a car had knocked down several power lines, a utility pole and crashed into a house sh- shortly before midnight. According to the police report, a woman 31 approached the officers and told her, told them that she was driving the car and that her 11 year old daughter was in the front passenger seat. What? Yeah. <clears throat> had a kid in the car. Both the mother and the daughter were taken to the hospital for evaluation. Uh, Mama went to the fifth floor because that's where they keep the crazy people. Mm-hmm. Uh, traffic cameras show the woman's vehicle heading south on Richmond Road, more than 100 miles an hour, speeding through a red light on Shaker Road. The woman hit another car, causing her vehicle to spin at a high rate of speed till it crashed into a utility pole, another car, and a house, according to the police. Uh, after she was taken to the hospital, she said that uh, it was a test of her faith with God, according to the report, uh, that she's been going through some trials and tribulations and was recently fired from her job. The woman said, I let go and let God take the wheel. Um, evidently, God is a bad driver, evidently. So, the woman faces uh, multiple charges, including felony assault, endangering a child, and driving under suspension. So, you know, it's sad. You know, she lost her job. She's probably at her wit's end, and she just doesn't know what else to do. But one, don't get your daughter in the car. What's wrong with you? Uh, but then just let let the wheel go. Ugh. Okay. So, first of all. Yeah, come on. This is stupid, right? Stupid. <clears throat> we do Second not all, endorse this at all. She's not dead, so 
there's something there, right? (laughs) 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 The one was, they weren't hurt, right? Right. Was that God or was that just really good airbags? I don't know. That's, it, to me, it, this is why aren't you dead situation, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I saw a guy I'm not uh, endorsing t- this for, taking small yeah. batch to uh to daycare, hit a telephone pole. I mean, it wrapped around the telephone pole. I mean, the telephone pole was like that, yeah, but he was up walking around using the phone. So yeah, the phone was a product of the product to begin with, probably. Put your phone down, y'all. Yes, put your phone down. Put Pay attention. the phone down. I almost watched a kid rear me a couple of weeks ago. I was in a, I was over about Speedway, but I was in the lane, like the lane next to me was moving because there was a protected signal or something. And so, you know, she's looking down the whole time and it sees movement. So, you know, it takes your foot off the brake mm-hmm. and then looks up and go, oh, Oops. he had to, you know, yeah. It was I'm just the- watching the whole thing in the rear view mirror. <laughs> fighting Ugh. for it. Have you seen, like, so I watched some, like, crash videos or, like, silly videos, but evidently in in Europe, and maybe it, it happens here, but people will, like, have, like, little dash cams in their cars. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about just getting some dash cams and just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cause the accident, but if I see you on your phone, I might pull up and then, sure. could be a deer, I don't know, but then... To call TJ and make him pay, and uh, you know, <laughs> that's that's my new lifestyle. Yeah, I have a friend that actually Yo. um has a dash cam and he got rear ended like the dude who earned him didn't even stop, just Ooh. plowed into the back of him. And of course, he didn't get it, but I mean, you can still see enough of the impact and everything happening. And he said, Oh no, I'm getting ready to get rear ended. Uh, so so he had you know, video proof, fortunately, to yeah prove that hey you know he was stopped there and the guy plowed him it wasn't like he cut him off or whatever the, the guy literally yeah it was crazy mm-hmm. have you guys been in any major wrecks oh yeah uh, i don't been in lots of wrecks no have you ever flipped one i got uh i did a 180 in my old jeep cherokee i got t-bones oh i did like a pretty little spin in the middle of the air so, yeah i tend to uh, wear my cars out before <laughs> I wreck them. yeah I was, I was pretty young i was uh, i was probably 19 or 20 wow someone like waved me through an intersection i got pounded oh yeah it was it was i mean i was fine but it was quite a shock and like i had my uh laundry in the back of my car <laughs> And the back window popped out, and all my laundry just shot <laughs> oh, out. Oh no! Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, and I dropped my drink, and I couldn't find my drink, and that was the most upsetting part. I, mean, I was coming back from lunch, where like, it was, I was it was a surreal, like a weird experience. I remember like sitting there, going, "Oh, I just got in a wreck. Where's my Mountain Dew?" I like, just looking around. It's Where's my Mountain it's weird. Dew. <laughs> hey, I had a friend in high school uh, getting a wreck. She got t boned in the driver's ed car. Like she was having a driver's ed lesson. Oh. And this oh, dude no. blew through a stop sign and T boned her. And uh, fortunately, uh, she was fine. She didn't have she and the the driver's ed teacher weren't hurt, but still was enough, you know, to shock mm. her a good bit. And she had coffee all over the front of her shirt for the rest of the day. Yeah. Mm. She had driver's ed early in the morning. They would allow you to drink in the car during driver's ed. It was the driver's ed teacher's coffee, <laughs> gotcha. and it flew across. It flew across the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's allowed to have coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We, uh, Jess and I were in Texas and, uh, we were just driving and car pulled out and I tried to swerve. I was in a Dodge Durango and, uh, tried to swerve. away. Well, he clipped the, the back of it at the perfect spot and we rolled three times. Mm. And oh, like, man. luckily we ended up, you know, right side up, <clears throat> but I've got scars still on my arm, you know, from when that happened and, uh, but I mean, we were going 50, 60 and flipped it three times and walked out and just had a few scrapes and had to go to a chiropractor for a month. But I mean, <clears throat> I, I don't know how that stuff happens. I was watching F1 this past weekend and the dude just 
ran into the wall and just got out and, you know, dusted himself off and walked away. Like, how is that? Just the safety that's well, in these yeah, cars are, are crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even like yeah. just our regular cars. Well, there, there's an entire industry built on keeping people alive when they get into accidents. Yeah. There's also a bunch of lawyers that are there too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think like I ended up it. getting enough money to buy an iPod out of that rack. <laughs> I was like, yes. The one thing that scared me, though, is I had a hookah uh, in there. I was like, oh, no, they're going to think I was doing weed. But it's just t- tobacco, you know? And yeah. then, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so I was trying to hide it. And they didn't care. It wasn't lit, was it? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're just moving it. Uh, so that's why. <clears throat> Speaking of bad drivers, uh, Massachusetts driver avoids a squirrel. You guys have been driving down the road. You see a squirrel. Yeah. Person tries to, you know, skip oh. over. Uh, however, instead of hitting the squirrel, they crash oh. into a historic home built by Abraham Lincoln's ancestor. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Teenage driver in Massachusetts last week swerved to avoid hitting the squirrel before crashing into the historic home built by the ancestor of President Abraham Lincoln. Officers were called to the Samuel Lincoln Cottage, um, and uh, the police said that the 19-year-old driver was in a 2014 Audi when she avoided hitting the squirrel and drove off into the right side of the road, uh, over the sidewalk, and into the front of the house. Probably should have hit the squirrel. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, seriously. I mean, this squirrel's not worth it, man. No, it's a squirrel. Um, dog, maybe not squirrel. I would, I would, I, I don't know what would be like what I would avoid. Maybe a cow. Cause that would really just screw the car up horse, but not, um, <laughs> have you guys heard of ethically sourced cocaine? Oh, Ethically sourced. Yeah, this is a, a new fad uh, forcing posh Brits to pay, watch this, out the nose. Oh. Uh, a new scheme is being dished wah, out to wah. the <laughs> Colombian drug dealers, or by the Colombian drug dealers, to pay on the raging environmental heartstrings of the wealthy UK residents. What some are calling woke coke is being marketed <laughs> as ethic- <laughs> ethically sourced and environmentally friendly, but that's far from the truth, according to Colombian aid worker Bibiana Velote. Um, it's it's just a new gimmick, uh, saying that the uh, drug is uh, ethically sourced or, as I said before, um, environmentally friendly. None of it ever happens. So, it's not fair trade certified. No, it's not fair trade certified. <laughs> Not ethically sourced, but the the posh Brits are sucking that stuff up. Literally, so there you go. Literally, yeah. so it, taking it through I mean, the nose. Yeah, <laughs> if you're, if you, that's how you want to ruin your life, spend all your money, right? But I'm glad that they have you. a heart about the environment. If you're product. dumb enough <laughs> to pay triple <laughs> right. for your fix. You know that's. You know, half, how many of these guys are making, you know, $200 million a year? Right? Well, they're CEOs. That's what it is. <laughs> See, trickle-down economics. Trickle that's down. what that is. Oh, that's all I have for tonight, guys. you guys have anything? Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, top of the show, charcuterie. Yep. And I was watching the old uh, TikToks. Yesterday, oh, okay. Someone made a McDonald's charcuterie board. <laughs> okay, they bought like a bag of cheeseburgers and a bag of McChickens and a bunch of chicken nuggets, and they, all, they cut them into like quarters and just mm-hmm. had them all like squared away on the little tray. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> looked really good. I was like, I could, I'd totally eat that, right? <laughs> yeah. Have you have you been enjoying the old TikTok? I hate it because. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've lost two hours the last two nights of my life. Like, <laughs> I've been working a little late. I've had a lot going on. And so I, I think last night or two nights ago, I stopped at like 10. I'm like, I'm going to just you know, flip through here. Mm-hmm. It was 11. Yeah. It's like, Dude, I was going to go, I wanted to go to bed. And yeah, I want to delete it because it's not worth it. I mean, there's some interesting kind of funny things that pop up, but yeah, 
How am I going to have time, that kind of time to waste? I mean, it is a time <laughs> suck. You turn into a zombie and you don't realize what time it like. And they just added the three minute videos or something, right? Oh. So they're like twice as long. Oh. Three, I forget what they were before, but they you can get longer videos. So if you watch 10 of them, it's half an hour, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh Yeah, I used to think YouTube was bad. And I and what's funny is I've noticed my attention span is even getting even that shorter. Much shorter. Yeah. Mm. Than huh. <laughs> it used to be. You know, it used to be YouTube, you know, if anything was over ten minutes, it was like, yeah, it's a bit of a long video. You know, like, <laughs> now it's like, you know, if it's a minute or less, it's okay, I'll watch it. If it's more, it's like, woo. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what do you think? How's that like impacting just, I guess, just people in general, not even just generations, but how's that impacting our attention span in general? Yeah, I mean, the f- mobile phones have reduced our attention span. Like, can you sit in, like, a waiting room at like, get an oil change or something mm-hmm. for 10 minutes without looking at a phone or the TV? Or, like, could you sit there, do nothing for 10 minutes yeah. without losing your mind? That's the question. Yeah. Not read a magazine. I talk. I just sit there and just kind of look around. Could you do that? Yeah. So when we were getting our vaccination, <laughs> I thought it was really interesting because I was I was mindful of that. Like, I don't want to look at my phone. So I was just like, okay, just keep it in your pocket and just look at you know look at the people around you. Um, because it was a long line and people play with everybody. Just had this is all they were doing. Head down, right? Yeah. You. They weren't talking. They weren't conversing. Just everybody had their little phones out. Just going through the line. It was yeah. it was really scary. You know, you oh, can yeah. just go pickpocket somebody and they're not even paying attention. Do anything. Yeah. So, Pull notice. And then I got to thinking, like, how does that translate to like going to church? I'm like, Justin's gonna have to cut this sermon down by half just to keep <laughs> our attention span. Twenty like, minutes is too long, man. Yeah. Like I'm already spaced <laughs> out. I'm like, what? Yeah. What's going on? I'm looking at the lights, I'm like, those are just really pretty. And then I th- start thinking about all the the background looks or like paper paper plates, yeah. square paper plates. So I'm like, start thinking about different food on them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> My mind just I'm kind of gone too. I'll admit <laughs> when I'm running sound back there, <laughs> you know, I, I'll try to pay attention. I wind up busting the phone out because <laughs> I can hide it behind that yeah. <laughs> the wall oh, and everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I so, hope Justin's not watching. Oh, I'm sure he is. And and now I'm going to get called out. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have like a little camera. Like, there. there's Ryan, are you paying folks. attention? <laughs> uh, there's another gentleman who happens to be on staff who watches soccer back there uh, in, uh, in the middle of the yeah. church. So. <laughs> oh. Listen, <clears throat> I can't trust you if you like soccer. I just can't. I don't. <clears throat> I don't like get it. It's the worst sport in the ever. world, like soccer. But it's so boring. It's. Have you watched I, a soccer I, game? Uh, They're miserable. I don't know. Some of those remember. those uh, Latin America uh, broadcasts of, of soccer. Those that's entertaining. Just like those the, announcers get into it. The announcers. I'll give you that. Yeah. But if you're at, if you're just watching the game to watch a game, it is boring. Absolutely boring. Okay, which get, is more entertaining? Let me ask you this: soccer, yeah, or NASCAR? NASCAR. Mm. I'll give you NASCAR. At least NASCAR, you could possibly get a wreck. <laughs> yeah, you know? in soccer, you could possibly get a bolt goal. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, uh, have, <laughs> possibly get someone kicked in the sweets. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, in the C suite. <laughs> yeah. uh, look. If you're if you play for what three hours and the score is zero to one, like yo, you got to do something. We got to we got to make either the ball. It should be like the big round kickball. Just put an extra ball out there. Oh, if you, get, if you get that, just do like two balls. Cut cut the screen in half or the the field in half. Two balls and four goals. Yeah, switch to half court basketball rules or something that'd be like that. Awesome. I'd watch that maybe. Yeah. I think they should allow tackling. both goalies in the same one tackling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, it'd make it a lot more interesting then. And it's only and you can only be in the league if you're over sixty five. <laughs> <laughs> Actually that that's what would make football even better is 
I was just thinking with the tackling and not having all of the, the timeouts and, you know, the pauses in the game, that's the part that, that drives me nuts. Like, just keep the game going. Like it rugby? makes it a lot more interesting. Have huh? you tried rugby? Yeah, there you go. And they, yeah, they rug- play without pads, too. Dude, I couldn't play rugby. Those those jokers are legit. I couldn't mm-hmm. play it. You know, the other sport I couldn't play is, and this sounds weird, is water polo. That is a tough sport. I thought it was easy because yeah. we would always like pick on them during mm-hmm. football practice. And then they're like, nope. uh, no, you guys get in the pool. Let's play. And dude, I was exhausted. And I'm yeah. a fat boy that can float. That that was tough stuff. You're a floater. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm a d- definite floater. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watched uh, Secret on Swimming at the Olympics? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's insane to me. That's where they can like yeah. perfectly turn in the water like that. Yeah. Speaking of the Olympics, are we da- are we having it? Yeah, it's supposed, it to, it's supposed to start uh, tomorrow, I think. Yeah, mm. but they've it, they've already uh, said like if it gets too bad, we're closing it down. Well, I know like the opening ceremonies are they're only going to have the athletes and whoever's putting on the show, yeah. and um, you know some media and that's it. They're they're not going to have the spectators like they've had in past years. Are you going to pump in some canned audience noise like the NFL did this year? <laughs> Probably have to. Yeah. They're going to have to. And where's it at again? Because I don't want to get in trouble. Tokyo. Japan. Japan. Okay. Tokyo. Yep. Yes. Got and they still call it the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, too. I think, I feel like that they've, they've, they had t shirts made. You can't, you know, yeah. yeah you've, they, you've done all the marketing. Did they, did they miss out on Tokyo Drift? Like, I feel like that there could have been a good combination with like the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. In the Olympics, good marketing. That's like, an interesting uh, combo. Yeah, have have the the runners try to miss cars going around them. <laughs> cars or just doing, have them all like during the opening ceremony, just do the Tokyo drift around. The, this yeah, is summer Olympics, right? Yeah, right, it is the summer Olympics. Summertime, yeah. it's summertime it, right? Yeah, right. Summertime in the middle right of summer. Right this is yeah. July. Okay, in Tokyo they're right. in winter though, so it's okay. but in like Australia, it's winter time, right? Yeah, it so. is. It is in winter Australia. Wait for real? Yeah. It's cold. The yeah. the um, southern hemisphere has their seasons opposite of us. So civics, geography. physical yeah. science, and now geography. Geography, yeah, yeah. Might as well right. throw in a uh, little pre-algebra while you're at it. Oh no, I have look. I <laughs> I had to go through remedial algebra twice in college. Hey, like, I failed college algebra four times. <laughs> Once you started like messing with numbers and saying numbers equal letters, I was like, I'm out. I can't. I'm with you. Bro, I'm it, with you right there. Yeah. Speaking of which, it is Pi Day. Did you guys know that? It's what? not Pi Day, but 3.14 day. I thought it was Hot Dog Day. That was yesterday. And Hammock Day, by the way. Oh, hammock okay. Day and Pi Day and Mango Day. I went day. through this with my kids the other day. Okay. Like there's food holidays. Mm-hmm. Like made up food holidays. Yeah. Apparently, small businesses really capitalize. Sure. Uh, I'm going to a different website. They're, it's ridiculous. There's two different ice cream days. Yeah. Well, twice. Yeah. One in the winter, two. one in the summer. We're in July. Let's see what we got for July. Oh. Oh, this is July. a whole new level. Okay. We're in July now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's National Baked Bean Month. Mm hmm. I like baked beans. I can see uh, that. Culinary, yeah, I love baked July beans. July 4th, baked beans, hot dogs. Yeah, it's also hot dog month, ice cream month, see? picnic month, Yep, and pickle month. Come on with it. Oh. Yep. Your old good old bread and butter, baby. <sighs> love you. Mm. Still all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so apparently there's a different food every day. I'm not going to go through all of them because... What's today's? And Monday is the 22nd of July. Is, what is, I don't even know what that word is. Panuck? P-E-N-U-C-H-E. Yeah. That's made up. What is the Panuck? Mm, it's a family Panuch, show. Panache. What is that? <laughs> it's French. So one day, like very recently, was Ice Cream Day. Tomorrow's National Vanilla Ice Cream Day. Mm, we're going to have colors or flavors now? Apparently, yeah. That's ridiculous. Uh, the 25th is Hot Fudge Sunday Day. I like hot fudges. There we uh, go. 24th is Tequila Day. Oh, <laughs> this is getting better. And yeah, that's uh, Saturday. Uh, 26th <laughs> is National Bagel Fest. Okay. 
and coffee milkshake day. Okay. Uh, Dude, I love those Arby's Jamocha shakes. uh, So good. Yeah. All right. Uh, Scotch day. Just (laughs) weird. Uh, Milk chocolate day. Hamburger day. At the same day? Yes, milk chocolate day and hamburger day are the same put day. So just milk chocolate on a hot on a hamburger. No, I drink mm. milk chocolate with no. the hamburger, but yeah, I wouldn't put it on a chocolate okay. shake with a hamburger. Yes, on uh, probably not, not on purpose. Ugh. Yeah, you had the frosty French fry thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that's as far as I go, yeah. so I don't love that, but that's as far as I would go. Uh, lasagna day and chicken wing day on the same day. How is it both? I don't understand how it's both. One's in bold. Why is one in bold? Uh, cheesecake day and raspberry cake day. This is all Cotton when? candy day. These are all July. Oh, well, let's, let's save them. And then we'll, when we come back, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll celebrate those days each week. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> all right. So August, we're going to hit all of them, right? Is that what we're going to do? I mean, we'll just say like on those days, like on Monday, sure. or would it be, was it, it on Thursday? Then what oh. is it on, on Monday for those that are listening to the show? Sure. So got some good ones <clears throat> coming yeah. up here. Hey, one other thing that I wanted to point out too is we are in season five of the show. Uh, <laughs> and then we will take a break probably around mid September and through, and through the holidays. That works crazy. Um, and I'm not able to do the show at that point. Uh, But we will come back strong with season six. So I'm really excited about that. We've got um, some cool things planned here locally in Concord um, and some really cool guests. But what we would like to do is if anybody is interested in like doing marketing or helping us with our uh, social medias or whatnot, we would really appreciate that. So if that's kind of your thing and you you Mm. like the show and you want to help out with the show, uh, send me an email at sfpradio at gmail.com. Uh, that's the next thing that we need. So if you want to volunteer some skills, some time, that would be great because uh, we clearly don't know what we're doing. Uh, Brandon w- used to do that for Facebook, and uh, mm. he's not able to do that anymore. So <clears throat> we would really appreciate that. So anyway, if you have social media skills, hit me up with an email. I can give you a hat, um, some mm. Liberty Spice rub. We'll figure hey. something out. <laughs> <laughs> yours just got mine. Yours got, yours got took. Uh, we'll figure it. We'll figure something out. But we would really yeah. appreciate that. That'd be great. Yeah. All right, guys. We're going to wrap up the show. Thank you again for tuning in. This is the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. And as always, keep looking up. Deuces. <laughs>